First, let's go to Bowen's green energy transition as it continues to unravel. Joining me for the latest, the Australian's environment editor, Graham Lloyd. Graham, we're going we're gonna to run around the country a little bit tonight. I want to start in Tasmania. It was supposed to be the renewable battery of the nation with the hydro and other technologies, but it's now facing its own energy supply crisis. There's issues with the Marinus Link, and you'll explain to us uh, what those are. There was supposed to be this big uh, wind and solar boom on the island. Well, that hasn't materialised. There's issues with debt financing capability. Uh, there's a whole lot of big factories down there in Tassie. They're being told there's no further power available if they want to upgrade or expand their business. What on earth's going on? Well, good evening, Peter. Look, this comes straight from the file of you couldn't make this stuff up. Uh, the battery of the nation is flat. Uh, Tasmania has been long self-sufficient in electricity due to its uh, hydroelectric projects. And it's been eyed off by other governments around the place to say, well, look, we can tap into that like Snowy 2.0 and we can use hydro to firm up all the renewables around the place. Uh, the problem is uh, that uh, sort of required the construction of a new interconnector with Victoria and construction of a whole load of wind projects to, uh, to supply across and uh, allow the firming power. In the meantime, the uh, hydroelectric company in, in uh, Tasmania has uh, become a, a power trader rather than a power supplier to Tasmania. And it's basically saying, look, it's run out of water. It's uh, down on capacity. It can no longer promise supplies to the companies that are in Tasmania. So unless a, a good deal of money is found to put everything back on track, it's a pretty bleak outlook for industry in Tasmania. And of course, we've got to go to those wind and solar projects because we know Bob Brown in particular, there's that big wind project in the north of the mm. state. Uh, the Greens are in Tasmania opposing wind, violently opposed to wind. I can't see a coal-fired power mm. station uh, opening up on Tasmania. So where do they go from here? Well, you're right. Bob Brown has sort of led the charge against uh, the construction of these big wind projects that are really needed to make the Marinus Link work. He, he won't be concerned at all about uh, these projects being put on hold. Um, he wants Tasmania to take care of itself and uh, forget everybody else. The irony is that with uh, Tasmania supplying hydro elsewhere to, to firm up supplies on the mainland, it's resorted to burning gas to, uh, to sort out its own needs. I tell you, you know, if, if we don't sort our energy crisis out, and it is a crisis, we won't have an economy in this country. We won't have businesses to employ people. We can't all be, you know, on the dole or baristas and, and run nail bars. I mean, that's what you find up and down main streets at the moment. I, I worry for Australia's future, honestly. And now it's starting to hit agriculture. Let's get into these draft rules. These are the rules that are put out by the Australian Energy Mark Commission. This will force transmission companies, we are told, uh, that when they go to put up high voltage power lines, that they must then engage with farmers to gain, and I quote, they call it a social licence. Well, these are going to go all over prime agricultural land. That's the plan, Graham. We know a lot of farmers, and I'm going to speak to one in just a mm. tick, they are furious about this because... When the line goes in, they're not allowed to farm within, you know, X or Y metres of these high voltage uh, power lines. And it dramatically reduces our agricultural land carrying capacity, our ability to uh, export food and fibre and feed ourselves. How's this going to play out if the laws are adopted? Mm. Well, anybody that's spent any time uh, with communities where these projects are being uh, put in place knows that there is very hostile reception and people do not want them. Uh, and look, it's possible to see a bit of a sleight of hand in these new rules. They're, they're basically saying, oh, oh look, the, the authorities have to negotiate with local communities and tell them what they're doing. Uh, well, they've been doing that already. Uh, it's just the feedback coming back the other way is, look, we don't want it. Uh, so I think ultimately this is putting in place a system that a frustrated government eventually is going to settle on compulsion. 
And uh, I, I think these communities face being railroaded uh, down to accepting these projects and these consultation measures are really just a bit of cover for that. I tell you, if we go down that path in Australia, there will be electoral punishment right across the board. Graham Lloyd, thank you.